Good evening. Welcome to our worship services here, our midweek Lenten worship services at Granite Falls Lutheran Church as we gather. Welcome if you are tuning in to our broadcast, a live live stream here, and uh, you are a part of us as well. The Holy Spirit and the communion of saints assures us that we are together. And as we gather together tonight uh, to worship using whole and evening prayer, and as we gather in this ongoing series of dialogues that Pastor Paul and I are engaging in here, I want to start with just a few announcements. We really don't have an announcement section here. A reminder, um, very quickly, Easter will be upon us, and uh, we're going to have three services on Easter morning, and we're, we're going to be putting out the word that we'd like people to sign up to go to one of those three services ahead of time. What we're trying to do is make sure we don't load up an over with too many people at a 9 a.m. worship and then um, have too few at, at the other worship services. So, uh, um, um, the other two worship services. So, um, we'll put a, there will be an announcement going out, and we'd like for you to, to sign up. And so, I'm just going to put that out for you now, so you start thinking about um, your families and such, and if you're going to be here, and if you're going to be worship. We know some people will still continue um, to choose to stay home, um, they'll social distance that way. And we'll still be, um, as we come here to worship, social distancing within our sanctuary and, and masking uh, and, and such. Uh, but we also know that Easter is important, something we missed last year in so many ways. There will be also then uh, a 7 p.m. Good Friday worship service here and a 7 p.m. Maundy Thursday worship service here, and you'll see more about those as well in the upcoming weeks, so do keep that in mind. Next week we have, of course, Wednesday evening worship. Tonight, after our worship service, we have a new member class. Remember, it's not just for new members, it's also an opportunity for you to meet our new members as well. So uh, uh, Pastor Paul, uh, and Pastor Paul will be leading it, and then I'll just kind of be, you know, his paraprofessional. And, uh, um, correcting me. You'll be, there what's you'll be there correcting me. Oh, no, 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 no. I, there will be no correction needed. So, uh, um, so we'd invite you to be a part of that as well. And God bless you as you come out here on this snowy evening. It was a little bit of a surprise. But, of course, March weather is always full of surprises. Let's continue our worship then. And, uh, of course, the, the hymn chosen, As the Sun with Longer Journey, is partly an anticipation because this Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. And we're going to have, um, the days are getting longer, and with Daylight Savings Time, the, the days will end later. Now, the tune is a little tricky, so uh, you might just want to listen to Joyce sing it the first time, and uh, maybe sing quietly or, 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 or a hum or whatever, um, but the words are the key. As the sun with longer journey melts the winter snow and ice, with its slowly growing radiance warms the seed beneath the earth, may the sun of Christ's uprising gently bring our hearts to life. Oh, 
as we join together in a prayer. O oh God, rich in mercy by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and you rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we join together then in our Holy Evening Prayer service. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. Glorious light of heavenly glory, loving love of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Shall raise all songs to you, God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts on you. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom. We can hear your quiet song. And it fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul. Love that bursts all changes under, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of mind, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light, and love the whole creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless days. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God the thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Creator of the universe, from all you have led your
sins before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround us and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Scripture is taken from the 16th chapter of Luke 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted some superfluously, some plus, whatever, every day. Sorry, sorry. At, the, <laughs> at this gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who long to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table, even though dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, Have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into his place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced either if someone rises from the dead.
How long do you think it will take you to finish your book about the apostles? I'm almost done. I'm, I'm writing now about uh, Paul's final journey, the, the time he came to Rome and, and was able to witness the gospel in the capital of the empire. Mm. I'm glad I can help you to finish your writing project. I'm eager to see how many people will believe in Jesus as their Lord after they hear your story about Jesus' death and rising again, plus your new book about what amazing things the apostles did once they realized that Jesus was risen. They did, but don't forget the role of the Holy Spirit. The right. The disciples would never have found the courage to share their faith without the hope of the Holy Spirit. Theo, I appreciate your, uh, your enthusiasm for my writing. But I don't have the same confidence that people will automatically believe in Jesus just because they, they hear the story of his death and resurrection. You don't? Why not? Your sharing of the story of resurrection persuaded me to see okay. Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promises. Do you remember the time I went along with Paul the first time he went to Greece? Paul went on to Athens, and he talked about the uh, resurrection with the gathering of philosophers in their central marketplace, and they all dismissed him, <laughs> probably, probably thinking he was crazy. Well, he was talking with the philosophers. They always doubt everything. You're right, but, but, but think, even at the, at the end of the gospel, after Jesus had been raised from the dead, he was, he was talking with, with two of his disciples as they were walking on their way home to the village of Emmaus. And, and even after Jesus explained how what had happened to him was anticipated in Moses and the prophets. <laughs> they didn't believe him or even recognize him until he, until he broke bread with them. Mm. This reminds me of Jesus' parable about the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus. Didn't the rich man want Lazarus to go and warn the rich man's brothers about how awful Hades was? Right. And Father Abraham refused. For he said that uh, his brothers had uh, Moses and the prophets. And when the rich man argued that someone risen from the dead would persuade them, Abraham replied that if they didn't listen to Moses and the prophets, they wouldn't listen to a risen person either. <laughs> How ironic that statement is. You surely have shown that the witness of the risen Jesus did not automatically compel people to believe in him. Why do you suppose that's true? I think people won't hear the message about Jesus if they're not open to the Holy Spirit touching their hearts. And if they have other loyalties that interfere with believing in Jesus. What do you mean? Consider the rich man. He lived a very extravagant life, self-centered. He wore expensive clothes. Uh, he feasted uh, every day, uh, not just once in a while. He didn't even pay attention to poor Lazarus at his doorstep. If he had truly listened to Moses and the uh, prophets, he would have heard how important it is for believers to help the poor and hungry. The rich man was so committed to his own comfortable, extravagant lifestyle that he couldn't hear God's call to feed the poor person at his gate. I couldn't believe how arrogant that rich man was. He ignored Lazarus in his earthly life, and then he is brazen enough to ask Father Abraham to send Lazarus like a servant with some water. That did take some gall. <laughs> that parable reminds me of Jesus' sermons where he says, Blessed are you who are poor, for you will receive the kingdom of God. And then he adds a little later, 
Woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your reward. And I'm not surprised that you're not complaining again about how a rich person is portrayed in this parable. (laughs) I've given up on winning that battle, Luke. Besides, you've shown me a helpful way to understand Jesus' teachings about wealth. What's that then, Theo? The trouble with wealth, the trouble with the rich man in the parable, is not that he is rich. The trouble is that he is so wrapped up in his own pleasures that he ignores the Bible's clear command to care for people in need. And he turns a blind eye to Lazarus, whose needs are obvious right at his gate. Right. This parable then leaves us, I think, with two questions. It does? What are they? What message is the Holy Spirit speaking to us through God's Word right now? Well, that's an important question. And we have even less of an excuse to not hear the Spirit's message than the rich man. And uh, why do you say that? Because not only do we have Moses and the prophets in Mm -hmm. the Scriptures, but we also have Jesus risen from the dead. Yes. Plus, new writings from the letters of Paul and your gospel. And that's right. And if we open our hearts and our minds, the Spirit will show us God's will for us. Now, what's the second question? Are there opportunities for helping people in need that we are missing because we're so focused on ourselves that we cannot see them? That's an important question, too. These parables of Jesus that you write about have helped me to see that Jesus came to show us God's love and that following Jesus means to not just think about ourselves, but to open our hearts to share God's love with others around us. Then uh, there will be no Lazarus lying at the gate of your villa. I should hope not. I appreciate these good questions you raised. They should give me something to think about while you finish writing. In the story, of course, and in this parable, we we find ourselves uh, imagining, imagining Lazarus lying at the gate of this villa that uh, the rich man lies uh, that the rich man owes. Lazarus lying at the gate, and, and uh, we may have seen pictures of that through the years, or, or we have, may have been prompted to, to think about it and consider it. I'd like for you to think about the gates in your lives. It, it might be the door to this church. We have people come um, um, who need assistance of some sort. They're at our gates, and then, then Val or, or Ginny encounter them, and then, they, and then they talk with Pastor Paul and I, because it's our gate as well. Your gate may be where your home is. You might have a neighbor, a neighbor um, who's not lying there, okay, literally, but who is there um, at your gate, and... Uh, If you look at them with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, you will see them as an opportunity. And then there are are others in our area. We have gates which are in our town. We have gates in our county. We have uh, gates all over where where we... They don't shut people in or out, but what they do is they become places that uh, it's so easy for us to walk through and past and put all behind us. Well, by the power of the Holy Spirit that, uh, that Luke and, and Theophilus speak of, um, I ask that you be filled with that Holy Spirit, that your eyes may be opened to the opportunities for you to be the very hands and the words of Christ in people's, in people's lives. Amen.
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am a servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your to show God, and my spirit rejoices. Sin. 
Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We join together in singing hymn number 319, O Lord, throughout these 40 days, all of the verses.
Thank you.